Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about the dangers of e-cigarettes and, and vaping. And I have just some very special people with me um, to, to talk about this very important issue and the need for change. So first of all, I'd like to introduce Jack Waxman. And Jack, you're a senior at Scarsdale High School. Yes. Welcome. It's great Thank to have so you much. here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Right. Well, I met Jack because he's been lobbying me in different right. places about the topic we're going to talk about. And then Michael Maitland, who is a senior at Horace Greeley High School. Hi. How are you? Welcome. It's good to have you here. Thank and you're you very involved in in this issue too and trying to make changes. Yes, thank you for having me. Right. And Dr. Richard um, Stumacher, who is a pul pulmonologist at Northern Westchester Hospital, welcome. And uh, we'll find out how you got involved, but let's let's sure. talk with, let's start with Jack. Of course. Okay. So, why are we here, Jack? What's what's the problem? How are you into it? So, the problem is that there's so many youth right now that are not just using e-cigarettes and jewels, but are also addicted to them. You know, the problem started last year when I was a junior at Scarsdale High School, and my friends started to use these products, and they were kind of messing around with it. They're like, oh, this is pretty cool. Flash, you know, fast forward to now, and you have almost half the population of my school or of my class addicted to these products, these e-cigarettes, you know, the flashy packaging, the exotic flavors, the high nicotine levels. And, you know, I see a problem and I'm doing all I can to, you know, fight with it. Um, as an intern for Senator Schumer, I wrote my policy, you know, intern paper on it. And from there, it kind of just snowballed into something more serious. So, you know, I've been meeting with legislators and making videos to show, you know, the population just what the problem is and how we can, you know, work together to make a solution and improve the problem. Um, since I'm not in high school, I didn't realize that it was such a big problem. I didn't, you know, you say more than more than half of, of the yeah, kids it's, it's in terrible school. and it, you know it's with everyone you know freshmen up to seniors and then you go to the middle schools it's a problem there too you know although um, there hasn't been you know specific um, polls or you know s numbers that show kind of the percentages back in 2016 when e-cigarettes weren't even a big problem um, the campaign for tobacco free kids found that around 16 percent of seniors used it up from 1.5% in 2011, and in, mm -hmm. now it's in 2018. You can imagine those numbers are much higher. Wow. Yeah. Huge, huge yes. epidemic, really. Uh, Michael, do you have the, you know, you're, you're at Horace Greeley, a different high school. Is it the same story? So I think it's a little bit different. I think that at Greeley, it started off having your traditional vapes, and then two years ago, people started getting into Juul, and at Greeley, people do it because they think it's cool and they don't really think that it's bad for them. They kind of see it as like a fun social thing to do. I mean, people, you could walk into a bathroom and you're almost guaranteed to see somebody or a group of people jeweling and no one can really do anything about it because it's very easy to conceal and stuff. And overall, people just use it and don't see it as an issue. You, you use the term jeweling and um is 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 does it look does a, a it's a jewel right but you're jeweling when you're smoking it does it look like a regular e-cigarette so actually it looks a lot more discreet it actually looks like a uh, flash drive and so actually in the library kids have said oh yeah i'm just charging my i put i put my flash drive into my computer and the librarians or the teachers will have no idea because it's so discreet and mm -hmm. You can put it in your pocket, you can put it in your sock, you could hide it anywhere and really not get caught with it. Wow. Yeah. So, Rich, how did you get involved in this issue? Um, so I work at uh, Northern West Chester Hospital, and we have a uh, President's uh, Junior Leadership Council that Michael is on. And it's a, a group of high school students from uh, the, the schools in our catchment center, catchment area. And every year they meet and they discuss what health issue or topic they want to address and then bring back to their schools. And uh, last year they went to the CEO of our hospital, Joel Seligman, and said, vaping is really terrible and we'd like your help in doing something about it. So the hospital looked to me because I do smoking cessation and I've been doing it for I think 13, 14 years. And they said, Rich, what do you know about vaping? And mm -hmm. I said, nothing. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. time for me to learn. 
So I started to research and I started to look through the articles and uh, um, some of the research that's out there and what I started to discover had me very, very concerned. I was invited by uh, Nita Lowy to come to a, a special panel of school superintendents where I was able to kind of give some of the information that I had learned and then um, Mary Fox Alter is the superintendent of Pleasantville had asked me to come speak to their Pleasantville Strong which is a, a, an organization against tobacco and alcohol and drug use in the town because there was a vape shop opening up. And from that it kind of snowballed and I started doing a lot of parent presentations in our catchment center. But even more importantly, uh, thanks to Michael and, and his colleagues or his you know, co-students, we, we kind of changed what we do from a community outreach at Northern Westchester. So we have a respiratory therapist who goes to the middle schools and usually gives a lecture on smoking and cigarettes. And so you're, you, you're talking about middle school, the not middle even high school. school. Right, so middle school to their health classes, they go in and they had been talking about smoking, but we know that none of these kids want to smoke. It's considered disgusting and no one's really smoking, at least in Westchester at that age, very, very few but they're all vaping, and many of them start in middle school, believe it or not. So we completely changed the talk from 100% about smoking to about 25% about smoking and 75% about vaping. So we're now teaching the middle schoolers about the dangers of vaping and to give them tools to be prepared how to say no when they're offered a jewel at a party, because we know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's only a question of when, not if, at a party that some older kid is gonna offer a younger kid a mango flavored vape and say, take a hit of this. And then the kid is going, the younger kid is gonna say, well, is there nicotine in it? And nobody even knows if there's nicotine because they've heard the word nicotine. Some say yes, some say no, some say don't worry about it. They start vaping and the next thing you know, they're, they're very addicted. Wow, so you all, you're seniors, you go to parties, I'm sure. Um, is that true? Is that what happens? A lot of pressure? I don't think that there's necessarily a lot of pressure if you don't want to do it, but there's definitely the option and people there being like, oh, take a hit. And maybe they're not going to push you to just take it, take it, take it. But it's definitely like, hey, you want to rip or the guys next to you doing it. You kind of want to seem cool because you're a little bit younger. Like it does happen that it's there if you want it and there is a little bit of pressure to do it. And, and can I jump in? The problem is the perception, and this is the key part, is that it's not harmful. So the overwhelming concept is, is that this is not harmful, it's safe, it's, um, it's marketed towards the kids indirectly as a safe alternative to smoking. It's a way to have a form of intoxication. You get a little bit of a buzz when you take it and it tastes really good and no one thinks it's bad for you. Yeah, and also it's the peer pressure, but it's also these products are genuinely you know, attractive to kids. You, they're marketing you know, applesauce and cotton candy. Not only is there a sense of peer pressure. Is that the, the name of no, the, the flavors? They're, they're, the flavors. They're like okay. thousands of different kinds of e-liquid flavors and they appeal to youth specifically, you know, s'mores and rocket blades and all that stuff. And I don't even think it's peer pressure. I just think like they genuinely want to try it. And, you know, that's geared on purpose because, you know, these companies can't create flavored cigarettes. Those were um, banned by the 2009 Tobacco Control Act. But right now there's a loophole with e-cigarettes and these vape companies, I feel, are kind of exploiting that loophole and marketing their products exclusively to kids in a way that, you know, actually attracts them. I think it's working and I think, you know, we have to do something to prevent that because I think that's an emerging problem. Is there problem. a theory? that if you use e-cigarettes or drilling that you'll go on maybe later on to cigarettes, you'll become addicted? Or is it just a problem of what's in them right now that's a problem? I think that the e-cigarette market is replacing the cigarette market for the youth. I think that there really isn't a mm -hmm. lot of people who are gonna go from jeweling to cigarettes. I think that it's very much, oh, I'm going to jewel and there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing mm -hmm. bad. There's not going to be any side effects. So they're staying away from cigarettes, but they're just going to continue to jeweling. That's the new mainstream thing that just like when you guys were younger, it was, oh, cigarettes aren't bad for you. We're going to smoke mm -hmm. them. They're cool. It's the same thing mm -hmm. with jewel now, mm -hmm. just a different medium. Yeah, but also there's a study that came out of the UPIT Health Sciences showing that an adolescent who, who vapes is actually four times more likely to begin using traditional tobacco cigarettes than their counterparts who don't vape. 
although that's a smaller chunk, it's, it shows that there is kind of the idea of kind of a gateway drug. Yeah. Right. So and can I, I'm sorry, can I just address that for a second? So um, there's a lot of literature now about whether or not e-cigarette use in the youth leads to conventional cigarette use. Mm -hmm. Um, and the latest studies show that it does, and of course people are going to try to refute it and kind of say, oh, maybe it isn't. The National Academy of Sciences and Medicine, of Engineering Sciences and Medicine, uh, released their report in January of just this year. So the, um, the was it the F NIH or FDA, I forget which government body had asked the National Academy to review all the literature. So they looked at over 800 peer-reviewed articles and they released everything that they have to say of what we know now about the dangers of vaping. And they said that the evidence is substantial, substantial evidence mm -hmm. that e-cigarette use leads to conventional cigarette use later on in adolescence and youth. The truth is, is nobody really knows exactly right now how much. The right. latest, the article that Jack is referring to, I heard numbers between two to seven times more likely. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean you're automatically going to go on to smoking cigarettes. And there are people who have a very good, a valid point that maybe these kids were going to go on to smoke cigarettes anyway, and you don't know that, but that I don't it became think a so. gateway. But, but the, I look at your line, statistics. Yeah. I think the bottom line is that these e-cigarettes are creating a generation of addicts, addicts addicted to nicotine. Whether they're using e-cigarettes or cigarettes, that's the idea, that these kids, these, these, these e-cigarettes are luring these kids in, and they're becoming ingratiated into this you know, nicotine addiction, which I see no end to in the foreseeable mm -hmm. future. And I think that's the main part that, you know, these, these kids don't understand is that, you know, nicotine, unlike, say, alcohol, like one whiff of it can addict you for a while. And it's not something to be, you know, tried, played around with. It's a serious drug. Um, and if not one of the most drug, addictive drugs in the world, I can't speak to just what numbers, but I've heard that up with um, heroin and cocaine, it's one of the most addictive drugs in the world. Well, we've tried so hard um, you know, in my legislative career of, of trying to lower the smoking rates. And so, and we were doing really well with our students. And then now, as you said, this is just pulling it up. Are the e-cigarettes are the e even have more nicotine in it than a regular cigarette? Yes, so the Juul, which is the most popular e-cigarette brand amongst youth, is four times more potent in nicotine than traditional cigarettes. They have around 5% nicotine by volume, while traditional cigarettes have around 1.23% nicotine by weight. Mm -hmm. So the addictiveness is just off the charts. So I also have older people say, well, I'm using e-cigarettes to stop smoking. They're going in the other direction. Um, and and they, they email me and say, oh, you've got to, don't ban e-cigarettes because I've been using that to get off of, of the smoking habit that I have. So actually, that's not quite true then from what you're saying is that with all that nicotine, it, it's not really helping them get, it's, no. it's just a different I think vehicle. It's just transferring them from one nicotine device to another nicotine device. Mm -hmm. And to speak to the idea of banning, I don't think anyone's um, advocating for a full-out ban on e-cigarettes. I just think there's a lot on, on, on e-cigarettes, excuse me, I just think there's a lot of support for the idea that you want to extend the Tobacco Control Act of regulating the flavors to include e-cigarettes, but I don't think the idea of a full-out ban on e-cigarettes is being discussed. Mm -hmm. You know, I, want to, I just want to address some of that. Um, the literature on whether or not vaping devices or electronic cigarettes is a useful form of smoking cessation is very um, equivocal. So there's a lot of good literature that says it's definitely helpful, and there's a lot of literature that says that it doesn't help at all. Mm -hmm. So we really don't know. Um, and that doesn't mean that it can't. It means for some people it's going to work, and some people it's not going to work. Jack's point about um, nicotine addiction is really what my major point of when I talk and I talk to the parents of Westchester is um, about the business of nicotine addiction in our children. So let's talk about two separate issues. When you want to talk, about, a, when you want to talk about an adult who already is smoking cigarettes and clearly wants to get off cigarettes, the first thing they should do is go through a smoking cessation program and go through the tried and true processes, which aren't that great. Right, because if they were great, everybody would quit smoking. Right. So if they fail those and they feel like they 
can't get off cigarettes and they want to vape, I think they should because clearly there are harmful chemicals in vapes. That's clear in that study. There's just a lot less of them. And we don't know what's going to be till about 20 or 30 years from now. So from a concept of harm reduction, people like to throw that terminology around. I would say to my patients, if you can't get off your pack a day and you've tried everything else, absolutely you should vape. Mm -hmm. This is not what we're talking about. Yeah, what we're talking, talking about, about is young starting, people. Starting in. And what we're talking about is a um, specifically intentional targeting of young children, middle school, with flavors so that they can enter into the nicotine addiction marketplace. Mm -hmm. So their brain development at that time, so part of the lecture that I give talks about the prefrontal cortex, which is the slowest part of the brain to develop. And it is also one of the areas of, uh, that's involved in addiction. So nicotine, which is in my mind the most addictive substance known to mankind, is being introduced into young people at exactly the wrong time in their brain development, which is makes them extremely more likely to become nicotine addicts. Now, again, I don't want anyone to be addicted to anything. However, we're still allowed to do things that aren't, you know, that are harmful to us, right? As adults, we can partake in harmful activities and harmful food and, and ingest these things. But that's not what we're talking about. And, you know, Michael and, 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 and his colleagues really saw this as a problem at a time it's very interesting that, including myself as a pulmonologist, was flying way below my radar and everyone else's radar. And it to them, they think it's safe, and yet they still said, it came this is quickly. a problem. I mean, that's what you've said. It just came up quickly as, as an option for young people. Yep. And so I guess that's, that's where we were. Let's, let's talk about the age issue, too, because we're always talking in Albany about when do we allow people to buy cigarettes? When do we allow people to buy e-cigarettes? Um, do we have regulations in place? So are you, you have a position that you're, you're lobbying for, I believe, right? Yeah, so I, I fully support Tobacco 21, both at the county and state levels. I think it's a great first step because it kind of increases, you know, just puts up another barrier because I hear stories from my friends that, you know, their older brother or their friend who's maybe 19 years old can legally go to the store and you know buy some pods or vapes and bring it back to them. So I think Tobacco 21 will be a great block there. But I think piggybacking off Tobacco 21, I think regulating the exotic flavors is also a, an amazing step because like Dr. Stu Mocker said, at 13 years old, these kids are very vulnerable to flashy flavors and you know flashy marketing. So I think um, those two initiatives, Tobacco 21 and regulating the flavors, are super important in this fight mm -hmm. towards curtailing teenage addiction to e-cigarettes. So, Michael, are you also working on that? Uh, yes, yeah, I also support uh, Tobacco 21. I think that it's a very good barrier because the amount of people who are 18 or 19 who can go and buy tobacco at that age can go mm -hmm. buy pods and they're more inclined to sell to the younger kids because they're more they're in closer proximity maybe they're in the same high school maybe they have siblings that are closer to that age once you kind of put that 21 age barrier those people are maybe a little bit more mature not hanging out with such a young crowd that they might not be as inclined to start giving those younger children the tobacco mm -hmm. products and get them hooked and that's a very important point that he says is that there's a secondary market in these schools and these kids are buying it and then reselling it for a profit and um, the just the charger device that plugs into the USB port and a computer is about that big. And these kids lose their $800 iPhones all the time. So you can imagine <laughs> how quickly they're losing these tiny little devices, which go, how much do they sell $12. for? $12. They sell for $12. So uh -huh. they find them loose. They find them on the bus. The other thing is that um, in buses where middle schoolers and high schoolers are getting on the same bus, if they're vaping on the bus or if things are falling down or around in the bus, then other kids can pick them up. So, you know, as these guys have pointed out and el eloquently pointed out, that raising the age will kind of distance um, mm -hmm. an adult from the child who might be enticed to try. So what do we do about the schools? I mean, we passed legislation, you can't smoke in schools, right? But you've said it's happening. Different kind of smoke? Do we, I don't know, do we need to clarify what 
it needs to smoke. So jewels and other vaping devices aren't actually real smoke, it's vapor. So mm -hmm. one, it doesn't have a smell. So if you're smoking a cigarette in school, a teacher, an administrator, another student can easily smell a cigarette, a jewel, there's no smell. So it's very easy to go into the bathroom or sit in the back of your class and take a, a little puff and nobody will really know. And then on top of that, um, you have your flavors so people can kind of pick them there. Also not as, you can blow big clouds, but you can also really have no smoke coming out at all. So it's very discreet in a way compared mm -hmm. to cigarettes. Mm -hmm. So so it is illegal, right? There, the, any, it's part of the Clean Indoor Act. Right, right. But you can't police it because it's very hard to find the children in the act. And all these schools do, and when they do, they have their own policies and procedures of behavioral misconduct that they kind of go through. And they also try and educate the children, and they're also speaking to the parents. Sometimes the parents don't really know what's going on. I've been in some of these schools, I've had the principals tell me the parents show up angry and demand to have the jewel returned to them because it was eighty dollars when they right. bought it, and they right. bought it for their kids, and they don't want to lose that money. So I think, you know. We have a lot of educating to do, don't we? Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so if people want to have that kind of education within the schools, I guess you have to have forums mm. and, and that kind of thing. I don't know whether you, your schools have participated in that, had speakers in, or you've been speaking, or. So I, I was at Arsley High School um, a few weeks ago to you know, educate and inform the, the students there about the dangers. Mm -hmm. But I'm also recently, I created this video called Jewelers Against Jewel, in which I teamed up with four of my friends who are actually addicted to the jewel. And I interviewed them on, you know, their experiences with it, the stories with it, and then kind of a cautionary tale to maybe a sixth grader who hasn't started, maybe thinking about starting. So um, I put it up on YouTube, um, but also shared it with my principal mm -hmm. and my health teachers and other schools around me as kind of like a, educational instrument in a way. So I that's think great. that's like a more... Is that the one that they showed on Good Morning America? Yeah, yes. that's it. That's great. So you Thank really, you. Ex you know, you were able to talk to a whole lot of people that way. Yeah. So it's up on YouTube. If people want to yes. uh, look for it, how do they locate it? They just go to YouTube and search up mm -hmm. Jewelers Against Jewel. Jewelers mm -hmm. as in um, J-U-U-L. So okay. check All it right. out. Yeah, that sounds great. So what about all these stores? I've been in some communities that, you know, are really, I think somebody mentioned this about the, the vaping stores and whatever that, that sell all this within communities. And I know uh, there have been a number of communities that don't want them, but I think you might have mentioned in Pleasantville. I don't, I don't yeah, know. But there's so how do, I, I mean, I, I think that the communities have to probably pass legislation earlier on maybe to prevent them from happening. but. Does that really matter in, in this whole thing? Everybody can get cigarettes. Well, let's ask them. Do you think cigarettes? Do you think any of your friends have any trouble getting vapes, whether or not the store is in your town or not in your town? So there's no stores in my town currently, and kids have no trouble at all getting jewel pods, whether they're using fake IDs, the stores don't card the kids or older people are buying it for them and reselling it. It's very accessible and you could get it in the same day, you could text somebody and get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, there's an argument that if you're legislating these shops out, um, that you're preventing adults who would be using those products to decrease their cigarette use. So it, it's very hard to just look at it from one perspective. Although for me, it's very easy to look at it from the youth perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To me, there is no reason any young person should ever be vaping anything. They should only be inhaling one thing, which is air. Anything else, they should not right. be breathing in. And so for me, it's, 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 that's why I like to talk about it with the youth because it's an easy argument. They just should not be doing it. Right. Otherwise, they come and see you later on, right? Well, that's the problem. That's how right. I got into the smoking cessation mm -hmm. business because it's it's um, it it hurts to give someone a diagnosis of lung cancer or emphysema or talk to them about being on a ventilator for the rest of their life, and I do it much more frequently than I wish to, mm -hmm. and it's painful, obviously, to receive that information. But from a career of doing it, I figure it's much better if I try and get ahead of it and be preventative. And so my concern with what's happening with the kids now is that 
there's this very cool device that is ex exactly timed perfectly for this generation of youth that has the most addictive substance known to mankind in it at a time in their brain development where they're most likely to become addicts and there's extremely good evidence that it leads to conventional cigarette use. So if you want to have a conversation about whether or not vaping or jewels are dangerous at all, we won't know for 20 years. But if you want to have a conversation about whether or not there's going to be ramifications later on, if, if two to seven times more likely, if 50% of our youth are jeweling right now, and only a small sliver of those kids go on to smoking mm -hmm. conventional cigarettes later on. Still We're lot. gonna have a tsunami mm -hmm. of disease, mm -hmm. COPD, lung cancer, heart attacks, diabetes. It's gonna be horrible 20 to 30 years from now. And that's what I'm worried about. Right. So where do we go with lobbying, get laws changed? What do we need? What are you all? Doing, besides going to college next year, <laughs> what, <laughs> what are you advocating for? Um, well, I was up in Albany last week, um, and I was focusing on um, ed obviously educating legislators about what's happening, but also um, kind of pushing for a regulation of the flavors, because I think it's common sense, um, and the, you know, obviously, Adults who are trying to use e-cigarettes to get off smoking are not using cotton candy or bubble gum, but the kids are, and I think that's a reasonable first step. And it's one of those pieces of legislation that will be easy to be easy to enforce because you just can't sell it. So it's not just like, oh, I'll just smoke it in the bathroom. It's just clearly set out, and um, it will have a lot of impact because clear as day, it can't be sold. So I just think that will be a great measure. Mm -hmm. But and for me, I think that education is very important. I think that with the laws, you also need to educate the youth because once that they understand that it's not good for them and it really gets through to them, it becomes a little bit less appealing. And I think that there's a very big disconnect about how bad Juul is in, in the, 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 the youth's mind because I think that they say, oh, it, nothing's really been shown on a mass scale that it's bad for you. And I think that that part is making kids say, oh, it's not bad for me, I'm going to do it anyway. And I think that if we start educating, it's a lot easier for those kids to not get hooked because they know that it's bad right. for them. Yeah, no, that's really, that's really true. Um, and, you know, you're fighting the cigarette companies, right? With the e-cigarette companies, which I guess are pretty much the same, aren't they? Are they no, the, the same, the, the a little different? No, the tobacco industry is catching up to the e-cigarette um, mm -hmm. The e-cigarette industry is really kind of the forefront, and right now, it, believe it or not, a lot of it is mom and pop shops that are around, and the major player that isn't is Juul, with a couple of competitors that aren't so as popular here in Westchester, but are around. Juul is a startup uh, venture capitalist um, out of San Francisco, and um, Big Tobacco, in their attempts to try and play catch up, are doing a lot of efforts in lobbying and legislation to make sure that this moves forward. Because mm -hmm. if they're in the nicotine addiction industry, and this is just another way to continue nicotine uh, addiction, then they want in. So um, more adult level kind of vaping, so something like blue, which looks like a cigarette except for the tip is blue instead of red, has had... Um, some, um, you know, actors supporting it and being in advertisements. Right. And, um, and I think we're going to probably have to stop at that point, but yeah. we have a lot of work to do as okay. we go forward. And I just commend you all very much for all that you've been doing to make a difference in a lot of people's lives. And uh, i just like to thank you all for being here, and thanks uh, for watching. If you have any questions at all, just give me a call at my office, 914-941-1111. Thank you so much, and be a part of making these major changes. Thank you.